Dr. Joseph Kanu understands that one way we can honor God is by being as healthy as possible. Dr. Joe believes modern science proves the healing abilities of remedies found in Scripture and, as a practicing chiropractor, blends those biblical truths with cutting-edge technology to enrich his patients' lives physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Welcome to Simple Truths for Healthy Living with Dr. Joseph Kanu. Listen for the next 30 minutes as Dr. Joe shares tips to help you live the healthy life God intends for you. To be a part of the show, call 313-838-1035. That's 313-838-1035. And now your host, Dr. Joe. Well, hello everyone and welcome to the show. This is Dr. Joe of Metro Detroit, broadcasting live from Rochester Chiropractic Clinic. Jeff, don't look at me like that. I, you know, <laughs> your, your intro changes every week, so I'm, I'm just so – I'm on the, the, the edge of my seat waiting. If you could have seen Jeff's eyes pop up. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see how you introduce me this week. Yes, it's Dr. Jeff. It's Wednesdays with Dr. Haddad. He's in the house. I'm here. How are you? Really good, Jeff. Good. Good. I was lonely before you came, and here you are, man. I I like to keep you company. Yes. And uh, (laughs) I like to, you know, liven up the show as much as possible and get you laughing. Boy, you do. You you (laughs) kept me going too quick. Hey, Jeff, let's start with a prayer. And then I want to rehash this diagonal dent you covered last week. Yeah, well, the, the early early uh, detection of, early of, detection. of cavities. It's a yes. technology that is at our fingertips, and yes. there are some dentists that, in my opinion, it should be the next thing, next investment in their practice. I, I couldn't practice. If they the don't way, have it. I yeah. couldn't practice the way that I do without it. I mean, it truly helps me do a better service for my patients, and that's really all you can ask for. If a piece of technology can allow you to do a better job in your occupation then i don't think it's a question of if you get it or right. not you know so we we love it and uh yeah we could talk a little bit more about it because last week i didn't realize how excited you get about it and we yeah, really yeah, we covered I, a lot of things and i think there's some I, little, little voids that we can kind of fill in sure. this week a little bit as well and i've got some other you know exciting things for you You know i always have some new stuff for you so there's another little teaser well, for the for the for the listeners out there beautiful some good research articles very interesting stuff of how your teeth affect the rest of your body well, that's great, Jeff. So this is going to be a reading from uh, Timothy chapter two. We're gonna I'm gonna kind of skim through a few readings that I was doing earlier today. So first of all, then I ask that supplications, prayers, petition, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, which I think is important with our elections coming up right right so this is good and pleasing to god whoever wills everything will be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth for there is one god there is one mediator between god and the human race jesus christ himself who gave himself as a ransom for all and it is my wish that in every place that men should pray lifting up holy hands without anger or argument so let's try not to get angry and argue with each other tonight, Jeff. I, I hope that doesn't, okay? doesn't come to that. <laughs> so, Lord, we pray for all of the listeners that you would open up our, their hearts and minds and gain knowledge and that you would guide Dr. Jeff and his uh, teaching ability tonight and uh, all the knowledge he's going to bestow upon us and that you would bless him and his family, his household, and his practice and Crown all of his efforts with success as he treats all these patients. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very amen. much. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyways, the diagnodent. Let's recap. What is the technology behind it? So, you know, for those of you know who didn't listen to last week's show, um, you know, this is a piece of technology that really is considered, I guess, newer in the dental field, but... I mean, not in our office. I mean, literally, we've right. had it for almost a decade. And what it is, it's, it's a laser. Um, it's a laser that literally is just light. We're not talking about a laser that, that burns or that cuts, cuts or anything like that. Okay. It's a, a low-level laser that uses the light and the fluorescence to measure the hardness of your tooth. And so if it's a dense portion of your tooth the way it should be, then 
it's not going to have as much much fluorescence, which is going to stay at a certain measurement. There's an actual number reading that it gives. Once it gets to a softer portion of the tooth, that number will raise. If you've got a higher number, it means it's a softer portion of the tooth, and we either intervene or we watch. And we talked about last week about there's times to watch and there's times to intervene. And I know with this with this instrument, um, some low numbers, for argument's sake, it goes from you know 1 to 99, 99 obviously being the largest and a good-sized cavity. Um, anything really in the mid to low 20s, I'm going to keep an eye on. I mean, this is the very beginnings of, of, of a cavity, but to be honest, things can begin and actually halt at that, at that stage, and we can watch them for years. Hmm. And the nice thing about this, this instrument is it actually gives us a measurement. Wow. You, know, you know, Jeff, I know this is out there. Hey, hey, can I open up the phone lines? Absolutely, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I think that'd be hey, great. So if anybody wants to call in and talk to Dr. Jeff, if you have any dental questions, you can call 313-838-1035. We'd love to hear from you. But, you know, so I, I know last week you were talking about when you visualize the top of the tooth, mm-hmm. you can't always see because it can be bacteria are microscopic. You got it. And there can be this microscopic hole, right? But then under the tooth, there's this vast tunnel. Well, you had all you, these bacteria. You grew, had the best right? analogy last week, honestly, and I have used this since then, which is the mole hole. That yeah. was perfect. I mean, that's really it. I mean, you think about you've got these grooves in your teeth, and these bacteria are literally microscopic and. For me to look at a tooth and use my Explorer, you know, our instrument that we're right. you know, trying to get a stick, that doesn't always work. And plus, by the time you do get that stick, it's too late. You've got a very good sized cavity there that who knows what's going on underneath the tooth, like you said, this, right. this tunnel system. And I had a, a, a patient today. You know, we talked about last week, we talked about instances in the past where we'd have a, a usually children, you know, we'd have, you know, you keep an eye on these kids and you say, you know, let's keep an eye on it. Let's keep an eye. And then six months from now, I'm supposed to remember exactly how my stick felt. You know, I mean, it's impossible. Right. But with this instrumentation, I can get a measurement on a tooth and in six months, precise, precise. And in six months, if that measurement's gone up, well, then we know that it's progressing and we need to intervene. Now, I had a, a, a mom in today that I had to get, break her news, bad news, the fact that her daughter, uh, who was in six months ago, we used the diagram then, and it was a uh, 50, okay? That is pretty significant, but you need to appreciate the fact that this is still small. I mean, again, I couldn't even get a stick on it still with my Explorer, but I'm getting a pretty good reading with this with this instrument, okay? Well, unfortunately, mom didn't put up any priority on it, which that's kind of what I want today's theme to be about, which is I appreciate the fact that teeth are not as big of a priority to people as it is to me or even to you know other people. I have patients who have very high dental IQs. Mm. They know how important their teeth are. They know that if they – um, you know, don't take care of them. That there's going to be lots of, of of repercussions, not just in the in in the mouth, but in the rest of the body. And my goal today is to hopefully inspire some of our listeners to know that as well. But this mom didn't see the priority. She came in today for her six month checkup. I literally looked in there, and there was a hole in her tooth. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking a little hole. I'm talking a good. 25% of her tooth chunk away because of the exact same thing you talked about. That burrowing system underneath at some point undermined the tooth enough where this child bit down, broke, wasn't having any pain because we've talked about that. Right. Just because no you're not symptoms. feeling no symptoms. I mean, when there's symptoms, there's going to be a problem. And I had to pull mom out of the room and she felt terrible. And I felt terrible telling her this, but I said, we, the odds of her needing a root canal now are. I, I would say probably 9 out of 10, to be honest. But we've got a chance. And I said, the sooner you get her in, the better chance we have of getting it. If that decay has already done the damage to the nerve, there's nothing I can do at this point. But we don't know. She's not having symptoms. That's a good Boy. sign. So she, I actually I made uh, room in my schedule for her tomorrow, which is not hmm. going to be easy for me in my schedule. But I needed to get this child in because literally at this point, every day counts. So she's coming in tomorrow, and I'm hopefully going to avoid a root canal. But mm. if I don't, this poor child is going to have to have this 
invasive dental procedure that at such a young age a, you hate to see that oh well no question especially one yeah. that could have been avoided that's i think what right. kills me the most when um people that have the opportunity to have say a small filling in or even a, a larger filling and they don't do it and maybe it's for money reasons okay which we've talked about and i appreciate that too but you need to understand that you're talking about a couple hundred dollar filling versus a couple thousand dollar tooth in some instances. I mean, if you need a root canal wow. and a crown, I mean, that adds up very, very quickly. And every person that's ever needed the root canal and crown, same things come out of their mouth. Oh, I should have done this sooner. Well, I know. Sure. So listen, for, for those of you who are listening, I know everybody here is sitting there going, oh, that's me, that's me. I mean, there's a right. lot of people. I, that, was, that, was, that was me, believe me. I've got a lot of dental work in my mouth. But listen to me when I tell you, when your dentist gives you the advice that they're giving you or if they have some technology that's diagnosed something, that you can intervene at this small, non-invasive, conservative stage, which I know you appreciate as right. much as I do. Sure. Please allow your doctor to take care of it. I mean it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. like having an infection in your, your foot. Are you going to wait for it to progress to your leg? Do you have to have your leg cut off? No, you're going to take right. care of it. Sure. You know, but I understand that these are just quote unquote teeth. Um, but life is better with teeth. It's okay? better with teeth. It is. You know, life is, uh, um, you can live without teeth. It's a sad thing. I tell my patients all the time, and they think sure. I'm laughing, but you do not need teeth to live. But you also don't need legs to live, okay? And right. I think life is a lot better with legs. Life is better with legs. Okay, yeah. and life is better with teeth. And it's and, a lot better with teeth. You know, and sure. so it's, um, sure. it's it's interesting, actually, since we're talking about life and teeth and, you know, what I guess the rest of your body can be affected, you know, we – as you know, I like to do my, my research for you, and I'm always interested in some of the, the, the new studies that are out there. Um, I found one about a new link that they're finding between chewing ability and reduced dementia risk. Meaning, chewing ability. Meaning those – With dementia. Dementia, correct. Huh. What, yeah, so, and it's, it's amazing. So what they're saying is obviously the population is aging, and as we – you know. Get older, we, it's more likely we risk a deterioration of our cognitive functions. You know, I mean, whether it be a true dementia, whether it be, I mean, Alzheimer's. I mean, there's all kinds of things out there, right? Uh, but it, it has to do with your cognitive functions, memory, decision making, and problem solving. Well, research is indicating that several studies demonstrate an association between not having teeth and the loss of cognitive function and a higher risk of dementia. Now, you ask yourself, why would that be? And I. Right. And I asked myself too because I said, wow, <laughs> what is now – the one thing that they're talking about is yeah. the fact that when you're not chewing properly, uh, blood flow to the brain, the actual act of mastication, the actual act of, of, of chewing, chewing is keeping blood flow going. Okay, That's, okay. That, that's one. Okay, The other thing that they found, which again, I'm curious as to what your thoughts are. So I wonder are. if you're on a liquid diet if you're not – Stimulating as much blood flow to your brain as somebody who's eating a tough, you know. There's proprioception, which, which yeah. we, you know, what that means is that you're, it's your brain knowing um, certain feelings in your body and your teeth. Each tooth has its own proprioception, and yes, I mean that's a big, big um, stimulate of of life and, and brain function is having that proprioception. I mean, you think about the sensory deprivation when people you hear people when they go in there and literally can go insane because they aren't getting the stimulation that they need their brain doesn't know where they're at they get confused and it's 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 a bad thing so that's one thing that they're alluding to the other thing that they talked about was the actual study said that out of these 557 people that were eight that's 77 or older they found that those who had difficulty chewing hard food such as apples has a, had a significantly higher risk of developing cognitive impairments now Dr. Nutrition, you know, you sure. are the nutrition guru. And when they talk about hard, you know, things like apples, you think we've talked in the past about how important nutrition is and how really the best foods for you aren't the easiest to eat. Right. Is that you fair? You need to chew, yeah. You need to chew, right? Sure. So is it a the fact that they can't chew? Is it the fact that they can't chew good foods? And that's, you know, is it all of the above? I mean, this is something that is... I would is, have to think it's all of the above. I would think so, too. You, you know, I, I always kind of related. I don't know if this is true. You know, my grandpa lived to be 96, chewed 
have it was always the it wasn't the wonder bread but it was the hard italian right. bread that you had to, and as a kid it's like i didn't want Dipping to eat the in crust. olive oil yeah, and, oh yeah you know the awesome. olive oil of course <laughs> but he was saying no you got to chew your food you know you chew, you want that bread where you have to rip and pull and he had his teeth he didn't have all of his teeth yep. but he ate corn on the cob when he was 96 good with his him. own teeth good for him you know so and he had no memory loss at all. I mean, when growing up as a kid, I never knew what Alzheimer's was. My grandparents, they had their memory. Right. You know, so and amazing, I wonder if there's know? chewing, but that that muscle, it's like a muscle. I mean, your gums and. Yeah, I mean, it's stimulation, you know. And But like you said, the apples or, or whatever, or lettuce, the good dark leafy greens are harder bread, not the soft mush. Well, yeah, you think about the mush in the world. I mean, the, the easiest things in the world are the. The carbs, the the processed right. foods. I mean, sadly, what the majority yes. of our world is eating these days, you know, well, that's mm-hmm. not good for you. Just because it's easier to eat, uh, just like fast food, just because it's more convenient, is not sure. better for you, you know. But well, I never equated that though to getting blood flow to your brain. I just thought it helped strengthen your teeth. The uh, the anchor of it in the gum. Well, it does, and I'll tell you. Speaking of anchors, you know, we we talked uh, about. Um, you know, denture wears, for instance, okay? You know, you lose all your teeth. Believe me, for those of you who are thinking that, you know, maybe you have a lot of dental problems, if you think having all your teeth taken out and having dentures would be the greatest thing in the world. The easiest way. Yeah, yeah. think again, okay? I mean, believe me, um, there's not one denture wear that I know that is happy they have dentures, okay? I promise you that. It is no substitute for your natural teeth. So please, if you're not taking care of your teeth, start, okay? Um, if you'd like to, um, you know, even have an evaluation. You know, we've talked about this before. I mean, please, I, I my, office is, my office is open to new patients. I would love to give people the information of how they can take care of themselves, how they could um, – Maybe avoid a, a, a catastrophe of losing a tooth or maybe even giving them some options to replace their teeth. You know, you can go to our website, rochesteradvanceddentistry.com. There's so much information on there um, to just educate you on the options of what technology and dentistry of today can can offer you you know um you can call our office at 248-656-2020 ask the ladies i mean we do this for many people who maybe haven't been in the dentist in a while or maybe have but have some concerns or some questions that maybe their dentist hasn't been able to answer you know i mean believe me second opinions are a good thing you know but um hey jeff you were talking about chewing right and i know you were talking about a johns hopkins study a while back. Yes, yes, actually, yeah. The the, uh, the the top ten things that John Hopkins recommends um, as far as better he- better living and better health. Number four was if you are a denture wearer, get dental implants. Now wow. that was what I couldn't believe that was actually on the John Hopkins list, but it is it is a an amazing recommendation. Now, I'll tell you why. We, you and I, we have all our teeth, and we're 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 eating, and we're we're living, and we are at 100 percent of our um, chewing ability. Chewing okay? capacity, yeah. Do you know what a denture wear is at? Can you can you take a guess at what that that percentage well, is? Well, I I mean, you, I would say 50 percent. That is that would be amazing. Sadly, it's only 10 percent. 10 percent. 10 percent. Wow. I mean, you think about that. I mean, 10 percent. And people of their chewing actually ability. want. To have dentures? I mean, you think yes. 10%. Now, let's talk about dental implants, which I love. It's so such a great service. So they're eating mush. They're, they're not eating the healthy food. You got it. Okay. You got it. They're not so able now, to eat the, eat the good stuff, right? Yes. And, hey, maybe back to the study. Maybe they're not able to get that proprioception going, get that blood flow going. I mean, having dentures is not having teeth, okay? Now, that said, if you are a denture wearer um, or if you're missing teeth, Dental implants could truly be a life-changing event for you, and it's an interesting thing. We said that 10% is your chewing capacity for a denture wearer. If we gave you a few uh, implants to support an anchor, you know, you mentioned anchoring. Right, you're anchoring right. your teeth to anchor your denture. You're up to 90%. Wow. I mean, well, that's that's a no-brainer. I would think so. You know, I mean, for I mean, most that's, that's people, lots of your life-giving. 
a procedure that you can do. It seems simple. Oh, but- it's, it is. Well, it is. And the way that dental implants are done now, it really is. It's not the surgery that people you know, are, are um, having their brains of this invasive surgery. I mean, literally, it's walk in, walk out. You're just local anesthetic. You're completely awake. A local anesthetic. That night, the last few patients that I've placed dental implants in, literally I talked to them that night, and they didn't even have to take Advil. I mean, it's an amazing thing. We just have the preciseness that we didn't have before. We literally do a computer, computerized simulation of the surgery before the patient even walks in the door. So the predictability is there. We don't have to – we're not going in and cutting and exploring. We know what we're at. We know what we're going to get, and it before. makes a huge difference. You know? and, but, but again, you know, we're talking about prevention here. You know, for those of you who do have your teeth – Please keep them, okay? Well, let's get back to that topic because, you know, it is breast cancer prevention. Yes, right? yes, like it is. Like in the NFL. We had Dr. Jim on uh, yesterday. He was talking about early detection as well. Perfect. With some of his, you know, checking their cortisol levels and estrogen levels. And, and with you doing this uh, diagnodent mm-hmm. where you're actually, this is almost early the earliest detection of cavity. No question about it. right? No question about it. And, I mean, I, and it's non-invasive. You're not getting radiation. You're none. Not, it's not an x-ray. In fact, we talked about it. It actually yeah. will cut down on your x-rays as well because yeah. we don't have to take as many views and have as many x-rays with this instrument. Yeah. I mean yeah, – That's really cool. There's no – I've never had it done. Well, I actually wanted to bring it in. I feel like <laughs> next week we should have a live demo on your oh, team. Oh, boy. And if we start hearing some big beeps, Dr. Joe, your listeners may be questioning yeah. your, uh, your dental health yes. here. <laughs> yes, if I practice what I preach you here, got right? You got it. You got it. You know, But no, it is. Uh, this will be, be funny. It, to be honest, it really is, like you said, a no-brainer, not only for the patient, but for me. I mean, it truly allows me to do things that I couldn't do without it. There's a few things in my office that if you said, what can you not live with if you were to practice dentistry, this would be one of them. I would need this to continue on to the level of dentistry that I am, am, have become accustomed to. That my I patients wonder what expect. percentage of dentists have this because, I mean, geez, it's not. I, I've never come across any dentist tell me. It's sadly not that high, never, and yeah. you know, unfortunately, in in um, dentistry, um, and you know, I mean, I lecture a lot, and I I'm, one of these, you know, um, one of the big things that I push uh, to, for dentists to understand is that you're investing in not only yourself but in your patient care, and you can't just practice the way you did 20 years ago. Sure. I take it back. Sure. I say, sadly, you can. But I don't think you're doing the service to your patients that that really is required of us. I mean, I know you're not practicing the way you did 20 years ago no. with all the technology right. and the new information. I mean, I'm learning every day here, you know. And I mean, I mean this the chewing belly. You know, we just read this research that just came out. October 8th. Okay, we're talking about a link between chewing ability and reduced dementia risk. Who knows where this is going to go? All I know is that this is going to make me more um, aware um, of some possible repercussions outside of the mouth with the body. And when a patient, say, is going to – has a chance of saving a tooth versus losing a tooth, I'm going to educate them and say, listen, I know you are viewing this as just a tooth, and I know it's going to be an investment to save this tooth. But let me tell you the domino effect here. You lose this one tooth, you're going to lose more. Why? Well, because we have shifting. Okay. Once one tooth has gone, that space – is going to close up, and it, you're going to start losing more and more teeth. If you get to the point where you lose all of your teeth, you are going to be at what do we say, 10 percent of your chewing, chewing capacity. You know, and the, the, the only way that I know this stuff we is we talk by about digestion learning. begins in the mouth, right? No question you need about to chew it. Chew your food, chew it, chew it again before you swallow. And if you're not, wow, what an eye opener that it's going to help your brain function. You know, I, I think well. there's so many things that. Um, Again, myself and again the layperson, well, shouldn't know, but but sure. but doesn't know, and I just want people to understand that you know even on the basic level of just quality of life, enjoying your food, tasting it, smelling it. Oh, Doctor Joy, I almost forgot about this. Wait a second, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 listeners, I apologize well, because I have something the, else. The here. light just went on. I here. did. I'm sorry. I had one more great research article here that I wanted to share before we before we leave you here. Um, it, it, what, it, what they've found now is that skipping dental visits may actually impact your sense of smell. Okay, so we talk about enjoying food. How do you enjoy it? You taste it and you smell it, right? 
Harmful bacteria can actually build up in the mouth, often resulting in decay, gum disease, or even abscesses. From there, the bacteria can reach the sinuses, causing problems to di- disrupt the sense of smell. I mean, Joe, if that doesn't inspire somebody, you know, we're talking about teeth, we're talking about quality of life, we're talking about eating. Now it's getting into our sense of smell, getting into our, our cognitive brain function. I mean, again, even if we we're keeping on the basic level of just quality of life and eating, well, we're going to enjoy our food. I love eating. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. That's why I exercise a lot because I like to enjoy my food. Um, but if people aren't able to enjoy their food because they're in pain, because they're missing teeth, because they don't have the chewing capacity that they once did, they're not enjoying. This is not quality of life, in my opinion. So, right, it's you know, not. Hopefully, we inspired people to yes. to, to, to that prevention is the key here. Yes, it sure is. Early prevention, early detection. Mm-hmm. Costs a lot less and saves that tooth. You know, Jeff, I want you to think about that. You know how you said if you find some of these teeth, when they start to decay, sometimes it stops. But right. if you did this diagonal dent, if it was very small, you, you sense there's a little bit of density going on where there's a little bit of decay. Right. Couldn't the laser kill some of the bacteria and stop it from progressing? Not that type of laser. Not that yep, type? They, they have a hard tissue laser. Um, that actually is that's a cutting laser. So the diagnosis is truly just diagnosis. Okay. I mean, it's just a light. But yes, I mean we well and we do use that. It's it, and they even use what's called air abrasion, and it's just a little air. Again, we talked last week, and just to reiterate, we find these so small that you can get away with not even giving anesthetic. Hmm. And we just clean the little groove out. We put a little sealant in there, and you can't get any more wow. conservative and, than that. And that can't be very expensive. No, no that's, a, that's, that's that's the least expensive right. it'll ever be. <laughs> right. And that is the way to go. I think so. Hey, so if you have not been to a dentist in a while, in over six months, you might want to check out Dr. Jeff, Rochester Advanced Dentistry, 248-656-2020. He is on our website, simpletruthsforhealthyliving.com. His website's loaded with great information. And, boy, Jeff, that was another great show. Thank great you. topic, and appreciate all that info. I, I yeah. appreciate you having me, and hopefully we, uh, hopefully we, we, we got our listeners yeah. thinking out there. <laughs> <laughs> and remember that in all you do, eat, or drink, do all things to the glory of God, Dr. Jeff Haddad, Rochester Advanced Dentistry. He'll be on again next Wednesday. Looking forward to it. Have a great day. Take care. 1011. That's 248 656 1011. And tune in again Monday through Friday from 1030 to 11 for another edition of Simple Truths for Healthy Living with Dr. Joseph Kanu. The content on this program is for sharing general information purposes only. It is subject to change with ongoing research. It is not meant to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure anything. Dr. Kanu encourages you to make your own health care decisions based upon your own research and in partnership with a qualified health care professional of your choice.